On this episode of Street Rack Garage is part four of the 1968 Volkswagen bus revival. This time, all that we have to do is replace this one little sill. That means pulling the engine out of the bus and tearing it half apart just to get to that one little sill. Great. So I have already yanked the engine out of the bus and uh, that takes all of about 15 minutes to do. That is not the hard part. World's easiest engine pull most likely. Um, the hard part is we have to replace this sill right here this one that is what's causing our oil leak um yeah and of course it's behind the flex plate there so you have to disassemble the clutch and we're just going to go ahead and pull the what's called the doghouse off right there that has the alternator on it because that wasn't working anyway and we need to replace these seals that are on the end of the uh, manifolds because they are very wet as you can see right here this is where I tried to silicone them to get it to try to try to start it up and get it to idle which yeah that didn't work out so these just come off in pieces that was giving us massive air leaks there uh, we're gonna wind up replacing this carburetor here this is the uh, Bolt car 34 pick 3 Not an awful carburetor, but I like the Solex We could probably rebuild this. It doesn't seem to have much shaft play, but That's the idle idle air and fuel mixture screws there. They were all the way out so somebody was having issues with it beforehand so all the idle circuits and everything are gonna be messed up inside of that so it would have to be probably sonic cleaned and I don't have one of those I need to buy one of those so we're just gonna put this on the shelf for right now use the cheap Chinese one that we have and uh, try to adjust that one up to make it run you know good enough so we also need to replace the spark plugs and check out everything when I took this out there was a couple dead mice right in this area hiding underneath the uh, the cooling tins of that so and big clumps of mouse nests that always seem they always seem to nest right in this area underneath the underneath the tins so the tins are right here if you don't know they sit here on top of the engine uh, the doghouse goes here it blows the cool air across the cooling fins there but when you get some mice that build up a bunch of nests in there that kind of defeats the whole purpose of uh, the cooling system here and yeah it, it leads to bad things so we pressure wash that got everything nice and clean again we had a couple bolts that were coming out of the oil cooler here it wasn't leaking but it was loose so I had to throw a couple bolts in there uh, what else did we do that's about it. I hit it with a little bit of a wire brush here and there just to clean it up. But um, yeah, we're just gonna, gonna spray this down a little bit. We'll change the oil because I'm sure I'm blowing right past that seal. But you can see how much oil is leaking and just sitting in the bottom of the casing. So, ah, but see, somebody, somebody's rebuilt this at one point and and see all the little RTV they put on it. I don't know if that was. I don't know. I guess. Hopefully that was. They didn't just shove that in there. It looks like it was pretty well in between the in the seal. Um, 
I don't know if they were supposed to use the blue or the black or whatever or the red, but the blue is probably the last thing I would have I would have expected to see. Uh, it's been rebuilt at some point. And hopefully it's not leaking anywhere where the, the case is split. That would be bad news. I'm just assuming that it's this sill right here since it, all the goo is sitting way down here. So I'm going to go ahead and pop that out, get this one in, and then we can uh, maybe hit it with a little spray paint, paint up the block there, and get this thing slapped back in and fire it up again. Now in order to pull this sill, I'm actually going to use the proper tool for the job. This is a sill puller, and I've used it like twice in 20 years. Normally I just screwdriver but since this is a sensitive area we're gonna do it the right way just like that the old seals out we have a little shim that has to stay back in there Sure, it's nice and clean first before I toss it back in there. Yeah, good enough. Now you know what I'm gonna I'm gonna spray it. This, this is not a job that you want to cut any corners on, unless you just want to take the engine out again and again. Well, nice and clean. And I'm gonna pop this other one in and will be done except for putting the whole engine back together and tossing it back in the bus I'm gonna put a little bearing grease on here just to make sure this slides in and seats nice put a little bit on the outer groove inner groove as well as well as the outer groove just want to make sure everything goes nicely Push that in just a hair, grab my old one, put her up there, give her a few little tap taps. looks good now there's also a little sill that goes inside of the flywheel a lot of people tend to forget about it because it's kind of hard to see just have to use a pick get in there pull that guy out so yeah, don't forget to change the uh, flywheel sill as well. That is uh, that is a little bit on the flat side on the inside surface. So good thing we're changing this. That could give us a problem. Right. So I just slid that back in there. It's a little difficult to do and film at the same time, but it's in there. Same method. I just used a little bit of grease. Put on the inside and slipped it right in. It goes in really easy, no big deal. Uh, we got a little bit of oil on the flywheel. Actually, we got a lot of oil on the flywheel on this clutch surface part of it, so then we're gonna have to get that out of there. Don't wanna slip our clutch as soon as we put it back together again. Oh, that's a lot. That's a lot, a lot. I'm surprised it moved. Get in there a little bit better. Yep, running out. 
All right, got a little bit more. Get that oil and grease out of there. That is a lot in there. That ain't a lot, a lot. Who knows how long that's been leaking. Probably all 10 years it's been parked. Ripping inside there and glazing. I mean, I cut a lot of corners. But this is definitely not an area when you have to take the engine apart that you want to do it. So we're going to clean this up real good. And uh, where's that wire brush at? I think we're going to hit it. Hit the surface a little bit. And there seems to be a little blaze, just a hair. Give that a little roughness. Got a little rust in there too. to look at the clutch surface too and see what what that looks like and there was just a lot of residue in there that's crazy I mean it has been dripping inside of there for some time yeah yep that will work let's look at our clutch surface which oddly enough seems to be in better shape it's not bad but pretty good uh Pretty good clutch material left on there. They say if it's thinner than a dime, put a dime up there. If it's the clutch surface is thinner than that, it's time to replace it. So that's a good half a dollar right there. So we're golden. All right, so I lubed it up on the inside. We're just gonna slip this guy right back in there. Like so. -ish. And our glad nut right there, which is a 36 millimeter, if anybody wants to know. And we're just going to drive it home with the impact. I think this is about 250 foot pounds of torque. So this is a Harbor Freight impact wrench. So each Uga Juga, Uga Juga is about 10 pounds. So foot pounds of torque, so we need approximately 25 Uga Jugas to reach 250 foot. Uh, yeah, no, not really. I'm gonna go get the uh, torque wrench and put the proper torque specs on this. So another specialty tool here. For Volkswagens, I have all kinds of specialty tools. This is a flywheel lock. So just stick that in there, slide the nut on the back. And the flywheel will not move. And you can torque down that gland nut. This is what this is for. Uh, yeah. I also have a torque wrench. Now, some of you are not going to believe I actually have proper tools. But I do. I, I just choose not to use them. Much. Alright, here we go. 250 foot pounds of torque is a lot. Holy cow. There she goes. There we go. Wow, that, uh, that was difficult. Probably need a longer one, but I usually don't uh, torque anything down that tight. Okay, one last specialty tool, the clutch alignment tool. Boom, right in there. Lines everything up nice and uh, I don't have a battery. Oh yeah, I have a battery over here. Where's my 10 millimeter? It's under the camera. All right. Snag these down a little bit. Crisscross pattern. Make sure that stays a little wiggly. There. There. Okay. 
get that one? I can't remember. See, it slides in and out real good, so. Still sliding. Make sure you cross these patterns. Oops. Yep. Nice and smooth. So, yep, that's all you need on that. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is check out this generator. It's 12 volt, not a 6 volt, but it's still a generator. And, um, well, when you leave generators like this sit around for more than a couple months, they lose their polarity in the magnets, and you have to repolarize them. Pol polarize them? Polarize them. Polarize. Pol there you go. You got to repolarize them. Yeah, I'm dumb. Now, in order to do that, you have to uh, run them basically as an electric motor. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and make up a um, some jumper wires. I have these alligator clip ends and some wire, so I just want to make a few uh, clips, jumper wire clips, and uh, I want to test it out to see if it's putting out any power at all before we repolarize it and see repolar. Not repolarize it, it's just polarize it. Not, I guess we're repolarizing it because it was polarized at one point. Now it's depolarized, so I guess we do have to repolarize it. Now I can always use these on some other projects, so we're gonna make up a couple of these guys. Okay, I ripped that off real quick, made a big long one, a short red one, and a short black one. And where'd the other end of this go? I only put one end on. Are you kidding me? That's what happens when you get old. Huh. Well, I mean, these things just slip on like that and you just crush them together. They're really, really kind of flimsier. Doesn't take much to crush them down. Well, there you go. That's how you make one. Anyway, so I'm going to hook some wires onto this. Get it with a little juice actually I think I want to spin it I think I put the drill on it and spin it and see if it, it puts out any juice at all and then we'll polarize it let's do that okay we got it all hooked up there on the casing there's a stud that says D positive there's one that says DF and there's a ground on the case so what I'm doing is the one that says DF I'm running to the ground on the case and then I'm running the case to the negative on the jump box here. And there's one that says depositive. I'm just running that to the positive. And I'm going to give it a spin here and see if this lights up. So, nothing. 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 Absolutely nothing. Now, if we apply power in this uh, configuration, we should uh, get this spinning by itself. So, I'm going to apply some power to it. Oh. See, it didn't take off very fast. It's not going well at all actually slowing down there might be some junk inside of there let's give it a little help there that does not look good that is really slow it should be spinning faster than that Seems like it's gonna stop. Huh. Well, I'm gonna let it spin there for a little bit and see if it uh, picks up any. Maybe I'll spray out the casing. But yeah, I imagine there's probably some crud and stuff on there. Maybe we can clean it up a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and spray everything down with a little carbon choke cleaner.
Okay, now if you think I'm gonna go ahead and apply power to that, you're wrong. I know that's what you're waiting for, to see a big explosion or something, but not gonna happen. I'm gonna let that dry up, and then we'll try it. All right, been a couple minutes. I'm gonna spin this. Still not getting anything out of it. Hit it with some power. Wow. It's like we made it worse. It doesn't even want to go by itself. Oh, we jumped. It's like there's only one good spot right there. See? Nothing, nothing, nothing good spot almost like a hit and miss motor that is not gonna be enough to do it I don't know what we're gonna have to do might have to try to take it apart Maybe if I hit it with some more power from the battery charger. Well, I'm gonna hook this battery in line with everything. This battery has 13.1 volts in it. And I'm gonna hook that up and give that a little whirl. See if it helps anything. Let's see, this guy is still not doing what it's supposed to be doing. I don't think this is working. It's got it's got a pretty good draw on the battery. I'm thinking there's an internal short maybe in there. You definitely should be spinning a lot faster than that, especially with the power pack. Well, let's see, let's turn the power pack on too. Let's see, you just boosted it. Now I got both the battery and the power jump pack on it. Yeah, that's not going any faster at all. I'm pretty sure it's got a dead short in there somewhere. Mm, we're gonna have to take this apart. Yep. Definitely not working like it should. If it doesn't make a good motor, it's definitely not gonna make a good generator. So, I'm gonna take it apart. We'll get back to that on the next episode. That being said, it looks like we're not gonna get the engine installed this time. So, look for it in the next episode of Street Rack Garage. Until next time.